Well, we're sharpening up a parting bit here today, and I thought I'd just give you a little more of what I think I know about the little corn tool and cutter grinders. Kind of the history on this grinder is I built this several years ago. I've used it off and on to mainly sharpen the faces of end mills, or the ends of end mills. And I like the little machine, but I've got some shortcomings to it, and there's some things I don't like about it, of course, the way I built it. So I haven't been real, real happy with it. So I'm going to go back and make some changes, and I need to finish it because I'm building, you know, on the little Atlas lathe, I wanted it to sharpen lathe bits and things like that to be consistent for the production lathe. And I need to get this little machine finished up. So what I'm going to do is we'll finish out this machine. There's several modifications I'm going to make to it. And the machine's never been fully completed. So I'll go back and start building some more of the accessories. Right now I've got a bunch of blanks cut for new arbors. So I'll show you those when we, when we get that far, when I start machining them probably later today. But I'm just sharpening up a little parting bit, just trying to kind of practice with it a little bit. And I'll show you what I've got. So I've already basically sharpened this up on the uh, side clearances. So this is going to be my little parting tool here. And we're just in a tool holder here, of course. But um, this is going to be our parting tool from the end. I've still got to face off the end. The sides have been ground, and this was originally ground freehand. So these are these are corn grinds here on this on this face back to where you see the arc stop. And on the other side, there's a little bit that's not been not been clearanced off on it. Um, and I'm not going to worry about it because that was the freehand grind. I've got the clearance I need. Uh, parting tools, one degree of back rake and bottom rake or side rake is really all that's necessary. I've got a little more than that probably, you can see. So I've still got a face off the end. And uh, the setup for this is we're indexed up to where one of the things I've never been real happy with is my engravings on the side of these. So eventually this, this ring will get redone and the engraving will re get redone at some point because it's not as accurate as I'd like. It's kind of a botched up job. So anyway, the setup on the top is we'll go about one degree to the side. The rotating base is rotated approximately one degree this way. So we'll set them up like that. To do the other side, you just simply rotate it 180 degrees, and you go a little bit beyond there, beyond that one degree, or you go past it so your rake is tapered towards the bottom, and you go that one degree, and then you loosen your tilting screw, everything's affixed permanently, it stops out, it bottoms out with this set screw against the back bar, and we'll just start it. And the cut's produced by backing off this set screw on this side, which advances your tool this way. Alright, so to adjust our side rake, what we'll do, let's just move the whole tool head. And I'll give you a better view from the front of this, but I thought for grinding you could see a little bit better from the back side view. So we've loosened the whole rotating base assembly. It's sliding free on this bar. So we'll get it up here so we've got clearance to adjust it. And we'll lock it back in position with one of the ball handles on the front. Loosen the rotating base and we want to set it around to zero. And it's kind of hidden back here. That's one of the other shortcomings of this setup that I'm not real happy with. I may make some changes to the way that base sets. So there we're set to zero. And we want to adjust our tilting head to about five to seven degrees. And that's done with another one. I'll have to do all this where you can see it on the front but we'll adjust that to our oh, about six degrees there is where we'll do it. So now our front's set and if we release the base again what we're going to do is bring it up here and we're just going to take it across that face to give us our now by loosening that running our set screw back in let's lock that in position need that much throw so we adjust this down to where that's going to give us our cut. We've got more relief on the front of this than we need. We probably will not um, 
cut that all the way down flush because it's really not necessary. We just want to make sure we've got the relief. I'm not going to cut any top rake with the idea that we can um, adjust that with the with the rocker on our tool post on our cutoff wheel on the back. So there's the setup for that. The front bar is loose, so the whole I guess our front bar is not loose. We better lock our lock our uh, part to our front bar. Give us a little bit of clearance there. Now the base is locked to our front bar there. We release our handle there and we'll advance our cut with our knob on the back. And there again, I'll just give you a picture of the front of this if you haven't already seen it so you can see what it looks like. And then as we utilize this, we'll get some better views of it so you've got a better view of what's going on. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start it and just advance it off. We'll see if we can get a cut. Um, we want this set to zero. Should be right there. Loose on the front bar. Start it from this position and here we go. And that's all there is to it. So we can take this out. Look at our cut. We don't have a whole lot of five to seven degrees there. And there's what she looks like from the top. So we'll just go back, polish this up a little bit, and uh, set it up in the tool post and uh, see how she works. There's our front grind on there if you can see that. I think we're running about an 80 grit disc wheel on there is what we've got. And uh, if we needed to cut any more on that, the idea is that we can set it right back in place, re-zero it on our quadrant, lock it in place, and we won't lose any accuracy. So that's the setup. So I think we'll go ahead and set that up in the uh, little atlas, see how that's going to work out. As I said before, some things I don't like about this uh, about this little machine, but I think it's mainly me not understanding how to set everything up yet, and um, the craftsmanship that I lacked when I actually built this little machine. Um, I think it has potential to be a really nice little machine. One of the things I don't like about it is it's a little bit underpowered, which um, once I start changing out wheels and everything, I think maybe that will... A lot of those issues will go away, you know, run a little more aggressive wheel and, and learn how to run it a little bit better. Um, I have rebuilt some parts on this machine and I will rebuild some other ones and make some changes to them as I go along. Ultimately, I wish it was a little bit bigger machine. For the home shop, I think they're a great little setup. I think it, uh, I think it will realistically do everything you want it to do once you figure out how to make it do it. But I can see a project down the road where I may scale this little tool and cutter grinder up a little bit to, to be able to accept a little bit bigger wheels, have a little more horsepower, and um, maybe be a little more aggressive in the, in the manner that it will remove metal to sharpen your tool. So anyway, if you find that a little bit interesting, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video, and any comments or suggestions, leave them in the comments section for me below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.